These same trig functions and Pythagorean theorem are used when dealing with 3D vectors. This is an excerpt video from the Force Vectors and Vector Components main video. If you'd like to check that 11 minute video to see the context of these 3D force components explanation, make sure to check out the link in the description below. The components of a given vector can be found using sines and cosines, in this case with two angles, and of course just one magnitude value. The y component of f would be equal to 50 cosine of 30, since the y component is the adjacent side and therefore cosine of the 30 degree angle. On the other hand, the opposite side of the 30 degrees, which is at the top but also at the bottom, that is 50 sine of 30, would be the hypotenuse of the right triangle that is found on the horizontal plane. With that hypotenuse and the angle shown, we can decompose that into the x component of f with 25 cosine of 1626 and into the z component of f with 25 sine of 1626. When finding these values, you have to remember that the component of z is going in the negative direction of the z axis. So if we're presenting the vector f with the i, j, and k notation, we would write it as 24i plus 25 square root of 3j minus 7k. Now, if we're only writing its components fx, fy, and fz, fz can be either negative if there is no graphical representation of where the vectors are located so that anyone reading the information knows that the z component is negative or positive if the vector component fz is shown like it is in this case here. Remember that a vector in one direction with a negative sign is the same as a vector with a positive sign in the opposite direction. If you'd like to watch some two-minute example videos pertaining what we just went over regarding the components of 3D force vectors, make sure to check out the links in the description below. Thanks for watching.